Okay, today is a fast flip project. It's a project that you really don't need a truck because it's small enough that you can fit it in most cars. And certainly if you have an SUV, which is what I have, a Jeep uh, Cherokee SUV, it fit right in the back. I had no issues. Also, it's a flip that doesn't require really any expensive tools. So it's something everybody can do. And so it's a small chest I found. It's a storage chest. Inside has kind of a black felt material lining it, but I think that'll clean up nicely. On the outside, it had um, some transfers uh, that we will scuff sand off. They're just outdated. And it had a few um, kind of dings in the bottom, right in the front. So I wanted to make sure to repair those. So we took some of my favorite wood filler and we're just patching those. Uh, I love this wood filler. It dries really fast and it's really easy to sand off. So even if you don't have a orbital sander or a power sander, you can easily sand this down uh, by hand. And so I'm just going around just to see if there's any other little dents that I may want to fill in while I'm doing this. Uh, but it's a beautiful piece. It has no hardware on it, but it has some really uh, interesting um, detail. And now I am just going to scuff sand it. Now I am using my surf prep just because I had it out. It was easy just to grab. Because, But all I'm doing is a light sand just to scuff it. So it prepares the surface to adhere to the paint a little better. You can easily do this with your hand. Just get um, about a 180 grit sandpaper is what I'm using. 180 to a 220 is typically what I use just to do a quick scuff sand and like I said it's just taking down any imperfections that may be on the outside and it's just preparing it for us to have a nice smooth paint finish and that's all we're doing here now I didn't show this on video but as always I did a deep clean before I started sanding I typically use white lightning it's a Dixie Bow product it is chemical based so if you use that product make sure you wear gloves and I always do a very thorough cleaning with the white lightning, and then I come back with a second cleaning with just warm water. That way it takes off any residue that the cleaner may have left behind. But you can use any of your favorite cleaners. The most important thing is you use something that um, will take grease off. That way you'll ensure that you're getting a nice clean surface uh, so you'll be ready to paint. So once again, like I said, I'm just going around all the edges and you can see this looks like in the back it has a hole in it so it must have been an entertainment center of some sort but now we're getting ready we're going to put our first coat of paint on i'm using a dixie bell chalk paint in the color midnight sky and i'm using my favorite 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 i can't speak um paintbrush my zebra since i got this paintbrush i fall in love with it and i use it almost on every project um, but I typically will, with a chalk paint, I have my misting spray bottle because you want to keep the paint wet. You keep the paint wet, it will really glide onto your surface and reduce uh, brush strokes. So you won't have that, uh, as many brush strokes in your final finish as if you just paint it on without any water. So typically, I'll spray little water in my paint container. I will keep my brush wet, so I'll constantly spray it throughout the painting process. And I'll even spray the surface of the piece that I'm painting. Once again, this just helps the chalk paint just glide onto the surface. Oh, look at those casters, those rollers I have under the feet of this piece. If you don't have these and you do a lot of furniture painting, they're absolutely a game changer. It's so easy to move the furniture around, especially if it's a piece that has legs. So I will leave them in the description in case you're interested. I think they were about 12 to $15 on Amazon, but it made such a big difference. All right, now I'm doing the top. The top is always the most important part to me. I think it's because it gets uh, seen the most 
and the light really hits it. So if you have a lot of brush strokes in your uh, finish, it's really going to be more noticeable on the top of a piece than I would say on the sides or the front. So I always take extra care to make sure I'm getting a nice, smooth finish on the top of my piece. And once again, the technique I use to ensure that happens is I keep my paintbrush nice and wet. I keep my piece wet. I mist it constantly as I'm spreading the paint. And I try to do long, even brush strokes. Okay, first coat is dry. We're doing a quick sand. This is like a 320 grit sand pad. And all I'm doing is just barely taking off the top. Chalk paint sometimes will leave a little bit of a rough finish. So we're just taking that off and we're now ready to do our second coat. Uh, and the second coat really is thinner than the first coat. I love this paint. It has such great coverage. I never need more than two coats, especially in these dark colors. And you saw we started with this piece. It was almost like a dark stain in this color, Midnight Sky. I did not use a primer, but it covered it right up. There's no bleed through. The coverage is beautiful. With the second coat, once again, I'm using a very thin coat and I'm just spraying the piece. I'm keeping my brush nice and moist and I'm just gliding the paint on. Here's those coasters again. I tell you, those are a game changer for me. Um, since I got them, I can really lift almost any piece and slide the coasters under it. And then once I have all four coasters under the piece of furniture, I can move it just about anywhere in my workspace. So uh, I highly encourage you to pick a setup if you don't already have one. Okay, now we are putting a top coat on this piece. We used chalk paint and so when you use a chalk paint you've got to seal it in so you have to decide what type of top coat you want. I am using it's called polyvine and it's wax finish varnish. I got it from the Melange website. It's a different type of paint that I've used in the past but I really like their wax finish varnish. It's very thin, it glides on, and virtually no brush strokes when it's dry. And so I'm prepping this piece, I'm putting a top coat uh, all over the front of it, which is where we're going to add the transfer here shortly. But I'm going to do the whole piece with a nice top coat of varnish. I will put a transfer on, and then I'll do a second coat of top coat as well. So it's just very protective. Okay. We are now going to put a transfer on. I am using the Redesign Decor Transfers, and it's called Somewhere in France. These are beautiful. You can see that gold lettering against that deep navy midnight blue. It's gorgeous. It really pops. And these are really not that expensive. There are three sheets in the tube that I got. They're 24 by 35 sheets so I'm only using one on this piece that I can use on another piece later on so very cost effective and it just makes a a real statement to a piece like this and so now I'm just measuring because so I want to make sure I get it in the center when you take your transfer out of the canister that it's in, it does have a white backing. Keep that backing on your transfer till you are absolutely ready to apply it. Otherwise, and I learned this by mistake, uh, if you take that one transfer to um, not perform correctly, it'll get stuck to other pieces and you'll, it'll just completely ruin it. So keep that white backing on until you're ready to apply it. And then when you are, take the backing off, lay your piece down, center it, measure it, until you actually press it down with your hand, you still have a little flexibility to move it around. But once you have it in place and you've pressed it down, it's there to stay, so don't move it. 
It will come with a stick, a burnishing stick, as you can see here, that will help you apply the transfers. And all you're gonna do is you're laying that plastic down and you're rubbing over it. You're burnishing it on. And as you lift the plastic, you if any of the transfer itself doesn't stick, just lay it back down. Burnish over it again. You cannot mess this up. Just go slow and take your time. And once again, you pull it up and your transfer did not adhere to the piece. Lay it back down, go over it again. Take your time. Okay, everyone, here's the finished project. I love it. I love this color. I used Midnight Sky from Dixie Belle. And it's such a deep navy, almost a, a black. It's really gorgeous with this gold um, transfer I used to put on it. And I love it, it came out beautiful. Now I also did some distressing. So let's uh, go in a little closer so you can see some of the distressing. Not a lot, just a little bit. I wanted to give it an aged look. This is gonna be one of the first pieces I put in my new Ooh, so I'm excited for it. But look at that transfer. Isn't it gorgeous? I uh, think I got this on scrapbook.com, but as usual, I'll link it below so you can uh, know where to go find it if it's something that you think you might would like to use. But look at this. It's absolutely gorgeous. I think it turned out just beautiful. I paid $35 for the chest, and it's it's great. There is absolutely nothing wrong with it. As you saw in the earlier photos, it had kind of an outdated transfer on it. So it just wasn't what I was looking for. I wanted to turn it into more kind of a farmhouse feel, cottage core, uh, and uh, make it fit in with all my other pieces that are in my shop. So as you saw earlier, I put a top coat, a clear top coat on here. And I, um, prior to putting the transfer on because this is chalk paint so I wanted to make sure I secured the chalk paint sealed it in so when I put the transfer on I didn't risk pulling up the paint when I lifted the sticky part of the transfer so I did put a top coat all over it and whenever I do a transfer and I, I think that's probably in the instructions I'm just not one to read instructions um, but I always put a top coat over the final image as well just to seal that in and to ensure that it doesn't um, start lifting up. It is a piece that I'm going to sell, so I want to make sure that I give it as much uh, attention and detail and uh, have it have long, long longevity, a long life in its new home. So I hope you like this video. I am going to be hopefully moving into my new space soon, so stay tuned for that update. And thank you so much. If you are a subscriber, I absolutely love you and appreciate your support and the time you spend with me. It's amazing. Uh, and if you are new to this channel, welcome. I am so glad you're here. I hope you liked what you saw. And if you did, I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button and becoming part of the family here, our YouTube family. And if you really liked this video, please hit the thumbs up button. That just really makes a difference in how my channel grows and it also helps promote it to other people who may like this same type of content. So once again, thank you so much. I will keep you posted and probably the next video I'll do a bit of an update on where we are at with our 90 day journey to make a profit. And I'll show you what we've sold and what uh, our profit is so far to date. So. Thanks so much. I love you guys. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye now.